the key point for me as a counterterrorism professional is to understand that indiscriminate force and violence and repression drive radicalization. That has been a lesson that we have learned over a number of decades, and we see this time and again. The ranks of terrorist groups are filled with those who have been abused by states or watched others they care for be abused by states. Counterterrorism works best when it involves the rule of law, and I applaud the remarks of the speaker on the last panel. The precise and limited use of force and the deployment of a society's soft power, its ability to convince those who may be sitting on the fence who are uncertain of whether they sympathize with the extremists or not, that violence, we have to be able to convince them violence is the wrong way to go. Remember, the more violence and repression there is, the more people will be driven into Boko Haram's camp. We know this from hard experience. Just look back to the events of the 1960s and the 70s and the ultimate growth in the 1990s of Al-Qaeda, which gathered in not only vet veterans of the Afghan war against the Soviet Union, but a large reservoir of people who had been mistreated by repressive governments they came to hate. In addition, it's important to emphasize one thing that we have learned in Washington through our experience over the last 15 years, and that is there is no, as we would call it, no kinetic solution. As has often been said, we cannot shoot our way out of the terrorism problem. And that's why I applaud National Security Advisor Desuki for his announcement in March that Nigeria would adopt a soft power approach that focuses on strategic communications, and demonstrates that counterterrorism is not directed at Muslims and that Muslims should be empowered to speak out against terror. It's an approach that emphasizes de-radicalization, <clears throat> builds resilience and trust, strengthens civilian institutions and economic development. This is a wise approach and I encourage Nigeria to embrace it and accelerate it. And as the nation strengthens the commitment to the rule of law, it must also deepen its support for one central element, and that is accountability. Once it is clear that those who commit human rights abuses will be called to judgment for them, Boko Haram will lose one of its greatest recruitment tools, and the, which is the notion that Muslims are subjected to persistent and systematic injustice. The second area in which Nigeria can improve its counterterrorism efforts is through better regional cooperation. Already there have been very important steps. And we know that these borders are very difficult to police, but we've seen real improvement in the cooperation with Niger, a country that faces a threat both from Boko Haram and from AQIM, and that it also has good cooperation with Chad. And now it's time to forge closer ties with Cameroon, which has suffered significantly from terrorism. Of course, cooperation is a two-way street. That means both sides need to respect each other's sovereignty, and they need to come to an agreement on hot pursuit. Cooperation is a two-way street, but it's also the only street. And the terrorists will find the weakness in border regimes and exploit them. And that's why this is a moment for governments to come together and recognize their common interests. The third and perhaps most strategic area where Nigeria can work to reduce the threat is by attacking the grievances that have fueled the insurgency in the north. And that means, above all, combating the poverty and the sense of political exclusion that has made the north a ripe field for recruitment for Boko Haram. You know the realities better than I. The stark differences in incomes, the low literacy rates, and the vicious circle through which these contrasts worsen as violence undermines daily life. I have a colleague from the State Department, Johnny Carson, who you may know, who was our Assistant Secretary for Africa, and he used to cite a series of statistics. Poverty in the 12 most northern states is nearly twice that of the rest of the country. Children are almost four times more likely to be malnourished. Child mortality is over 200 deaths per live birth. Literacy is 35% compared to 77% in the rest of the country. 77% of women in the far north have no formal education, compared to only 17% in the rest of the country. All of this contributes to joblessness 
and a deepening cycle of poverty. Why do these dismal statistics matter? Well, we all too often overlook this, but terrorists are selling a story. And with that story, they are trying to build a following. Many have focused on Boko Haram's connections with the international jihadist movement, and I have little doubt that they would like to strike the embassy of the United States, or France, or Germany, or another country here, if they could, just to show that they are an international group, and that they are true holy warriors. But their focus remains first and foremost on Nigeria, and on convincing Northerners that the central government does not care about them, and indeed wishes to harm them. It exploits popular frustrations with leaders, poor governance, and depressing living conditions. And it seeks to undermine the political differences and make Nigeria ungovernable. So the best way to combat that effort is to show progress in changing those statistics. The group is doing a good job alienating people in the North with its violence, and now it's time to take away its narrative and show that Nigeria is working for all its citizens, including the most disadvantaged. This will not be easy or cheap, and I know that President Jonathan has spoken of a multi-billion dollar initiative. It will take a determined effort to reduce corruption, but this cannot wait. Development and security must go hand in hand. It is, moreover, vitally important to increase security so the children of the North can go back to school and so that they won't fear kidnapping and killing because schooling the children of the North is at the top of the list of tasks that will bring a better future for northern Nigerians. Let me close just by saying if Nigeria can make a decisive turn in this direction, I am certain the international community will respond. I know from my own conversations with colleagues in Washington and abroad that Western governments are eager to help. We have a good, we have a saying in Washington, don't let a good crisis go unused. If Nigeria acts to show its concern for conditions in the North, to take a more comprehensive approach to counterterrorism, to end human rights abuses, to reduce corruption and increase accountability, the world will act to help. The teams of experts who are now in the country looking for the girls of Chikpo are just the beginning. Now, Nigeria is a proud country and has not historically looked to others for assistance. But contemporary terrorism requires an international approach and the quick adoption of the best practices available. There are many international bodies standing by to wait to help in that regard. Let me just make one more observation. Some have expressed concern that the United States would like to become directly involved in the fight against Boko Haram. The United States does harbor fears about the spread of Boko Haram and the instability it's creating. But my country and its leadership have no interest in putting U.S. forces on the ground here in West Africa. Not only are we weary of war as we wind down in Afghanistan, the longest war in our history, and continue to count the losses from our time in Iraq, the U.S. sincerely and deeply wants to help Nigeria and the countries of Africa develop the capacity to deal with the threats they face in their regions, nothing more and nothing less. In this particular country and in this particular case, we know that this is of the utmost importance. Nigeria matters. It has one in five citizens of African countries. It's one of our closest partners when it comes to oil and other natural resources. Its influence in the global community is large and growing. We wish you only the best. We stand ready to help. And we hope to help you defeat the scourge of this new terrorism. Thank you very much. Once again, we have a panel of four discussants to shed more light on the presentations. And we have a four-man panel. We shall allow them five minutes each, certainly not more than five minutes. And we shall start with um, Professor Atuboyedia Obianime to start the discussion. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. 